This specific thing that is shown on screen was something that caught the attention of many people, including myself. Now, for anyone that is obviously a uh, networking engineer or anything like that, this could obviously be nothing in terms of like importance. But I do want to talk about how, at least in my theory, in my opinion, this could be a possibility. Again, it's just a, a crazy theory, but I want to talk about it a little bit more within this video. Now, you would probably wonder to yourself, why exactly would Face Punch make their own game engine? and how would they actually go and do this? This could relate to a couple of different things, but the first thing I want to bring your attention to was the whole Unity debacle. Now, when it comes to the Unity debacle, uh, essentially Unity was just doing something that was incredibly shady and also very stupid that basically just alienated the entirety of every single game dev and game studio that would utilize Unity's engine for their game to just completely want to jump ship. It, it was wild and it caused the biggest uproar probably in the gaming industry, specifically because of this decision alone. Now, Gary did preference and also give his own opinion about this entire Unity issue and mentioned on how it does kind of suck during the development of Rust, why they didn't go out of their way to make their own game engine. And also even hinted at the last sentence in that specific blog post that Rust 2 will not be on the Unity engine. Now, while this is definitely a lot of speculation, the entire theory and point is that this is the perfect time since Facepunch does have access to the Source 2 engine, at least from what they're being licensed from Valve and a couple of other things. And they are tweaking, exploiting and modifying their version of the Source 2 engine compared to the one that Valve already has, which is the latest updated version, since of course they're developing and making it to allow Face Punch to actually do something incredibly different and new and also not only have access to the engine, but create their own engine in the process. Another good example of this is also, I know I hate to say this version, but Star Citizen. Recently, Star Citizen has been doing their whole game development, which we all know everyone has their own opinion on the game. But with the recent convention that they had for CitizenCon, they showed off this 30 minute long sort of uh, version of their engine that they have going on called the Star Engine. This engine is a modified version of the Amazon Lumberyard engine, the same one that is also used for New World. It's it's essentially like Cry Engine at this point, which that's what it is. It's a modified version of Cry Engine, which is what Amazon Lumberyard is. If Face Punch would go out of their way to do this, it would make the most sense because for one, they have the opportunity now more than ever to be able to create their own little engine that could be utilized. It is a modified version of the Source 2 engine, but I am not necessarily a game developer, nor am I a person who knows anything in the regards of these sort of engines and how the licensing and other things would work. Maybe if there is anyone that is watching this and how or, or tell me how this would work, this would be incredibly interesting to, to learn about myself because this would be cool. Face Punch would have their own engine, their own modified version of the Source 2 engine, which they can utilize not only just for Sandbox, but also for future games, including a sequel to Rust, which in itself, it makes the most sense since majority of the time, if you would look at what Face Punch is doing right now with the new scene system and, and working on the new tools and everything else, it's pretty much as what a lot of people would say or see as a carbon copy of Unity, but with some better tweaks and adjustments that kind of suit their needs for what it is that they would want to do when creating a game like Sandbox. Now to be able to utilize this exact same engine that they've been working and tweaking on future projects and games makes the most sense. I mean, it, it would be actually really helpful since it would speed up the process and also allow people who may be familiar in some cases to switch over to this sort of new face punch engine to make future projects down the line. Since there's so much that's going on behind the scenes with all of these different things, right? When it comes to tweaks to the engine itself, VR refactoring, I think it is, that just came back. So like now there's VR support back in the game properly as it's being supported. Thank you, Alex. There's so much that is going on behind the scenes. And obviously there's only so much that I know in terms of this information. And this is why I always call to the community or other members of the community, specifically developers, to inform me and also give me an idea of what could be possibly going on beyond my own basic assumptions of what I'm currently seeing. For right now, it seems like we're still in a little bit more of a baking process and we kind of start seeing some more interesting things happening here and there. So who knows, maybe you might get a blog post specifically talking about this in more detail and maybe 
who knows what will come of all of this. But for right now, that's all we have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this video on screen right here, which is completely random. I have no idea what it is because of course, you know, hopefully it tends your needs. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.